everyone. Welcome back to Miss Smith's art class. Can you tell what our subject matter is today? You guessed it, tis the season. It's fall, Halloween is coming up this weekend, and it's a perfect time to make art about pumpkins. are actually winter squashes. So every single kind of pumpkin is actually a winter squash. This is really interesting. And pumpkins are part of the gourd family. Very cool. Now, when you usually think of pumpkins, you think of what color? Orange. But did you know that pumpkins are not just orange? They could be white, or striped, or yellow, or dark green. There's even dark blue pumpkins. Can you believe it? But they are pretty famous for their orange color. It matches fall very well, doesn't it? Pumpkins grow out of the ground from a vine and here's the stem that connects to the vine. And they take a really long time to grow. So if farmers want to have their pumpkins ready for Halloween, they have to plant the seeds way back in the spring so that the pumpkins can grow all summer long. Now, since pumpkins grow from a vine, do you think that pumpkins are vegetables or fruits? Hmm. You got it, they are actually fruit. They seem like vegetables, right? Because of the winter squash things, but they're technically in the fruit family. Who knew? Since pumpkins are fruit, do you think you can eat them? Yes, you can use pumpkins for lots of different recipes. Have you ever had pumpkin pie? Mm. Or maybe you could use pumpkin to make pumpkin bread or pumpkin muffins. There's another part of the pumpkin that you can eat, which is the seeds. So you can actually roast them, put some seasoning on them. We like to put them in a salad to have some crunch. And the seeds originate from thousands of years ago from 7,000 to 5,000 BC. So these seeds are really, really old and they have been continuing to grow over and over the years. It's fascinating. Pumpkins originally are from Central America. So they started growing in Mexico, but now pumpkins are grown all over the world, except for one continent. Where do you think no pumpkins grow? That's right, Antarctica, because not a lot grows in Antarctica. One of my favorite pumpkin facts is their bumpy texture, which makes them really fun to draw. Pumpkins have these vertical lines that go all the way around. This pumpkin is pretty easy to see because the lines are a darker shade of orange, but you can see these vertical lines on every single one of these pumpkins. The dark green one has really really big bumps. That one would be super fun to draw. Our inspiration comes not only from pumpkins, but it comes from an artist, a really important, famous artist who loves to make art about pumpkins. Her name is Yayoi Kusama. guess 
by hearing her name, Yayoi Kusama, what country she's from? That's right, she is from Japan. Kusama is a Japanese artist who is famous for her polka dots. People even call her the polka dot princess or the queen of polka dots. She does polka dot paintings, polka dot sculptures. She even does installations. Kusama was a little girl, she had a vision. She had this dream that she was in an endless field of flowers. And the flowers started talking to her. And the tops were all like polka dots. So her entire field of vision was surrounded by talking polka dot flowers. This has heavily influence the art that she's made for the rest of her life. vision of polka dots everywhere as a child is now seen in her artwork. So she makes clothes with polka dots and she'll wear the clothes while standing in a room of polka dots surrounded by sculptures that are painted with polka dots. So you can see how you can take something that happened to you as a child and continue playing with these ideas even until you're quite old. Kusama creates what she calls infinity rooms, where you go and you're surrounded by all these dots and it makes you feel like you're walking into her childhood dream. Yayoi Kusama was born in Japan in 1929. And ever since she was a little girl, she wanted to be an artist. She loved to paint and draw and she even wanted to grow up to be a professional artist. But unfortunately, her parents did not want the same thing for her. And her mom would even tear up her drawings. Can you imagine how sad? Kusama, she didn't give up. She just kept making more and more art. And finally, she convinced her parents to let her go to art school. She moved to New York City in the 1950s and made a big splash on the art scene there. 
While Kusama was in New York City, she became friends with another really famous artist, Andy Warhol. And she became part of the same art movement that he was in called pop art. Andy Warhol was very famous for taking ordinary objects like soup cans and drawing them and printing them and repeating them in different colors. Kusama was one of the first artists to make performance art or action art. So she would not only create these environments full of polka dots everywhere on the walls, polka dot sculptures, but she would be part of the art. So she would stand in her installation wearing the fashion that she designed, wearing polka dot outfits, posing with her art. So she herself became part of the art. Yayoi Kusama not only loved polka dots, but she also loved pumpkins. She spent hours and hours as a child drawing pumpkins. She would draw them over and over and over again. And she had kind of a troubled childhood, right? She was sad. Her parents were not always supportive of her art. So for her, the pumpkin was a symbol of what was important to her, which was art. And they meant comfort to her because she drew them all the time in Japan. They meant stability because they were always there. And in Japan, they call pumpkins kabakas. One of Kusama's most famous pieces of art is an installation called All the Eternal Love I Have for the Pumpkins. And it's a room that is full of her pumpkin sculptures. They're all painted yellow with black polka dots on them. And they're surrounded by mirrors. So it creates this effect of infinity. You see pumpkins as far as the eye can see. Today, we're going to create a pumpkin drawing in the style of Yayoi Kusama. You can use whatever drawing materials you would like. I'm going to start with a yellow piece of paper so that my pumpkin is yellow and then I'm gonna draw polka dots on top. 
Hmm, should I use pencil or crayon or maybe Sharpie for my polka dots? I think I'll probably end up using Sharpie, but again, you can choose. If you don't have yellow paper, you could draw on any color paper you want, even white paper. You could add color or leave the background white. Then for the back, we want to do something a little bit different. So I may choose a different color paper for the background and I'll cut out my yellow pumpkin and I'll glue it to another color of paper. But again, you do not have to have colored paper. You can use white paper and simply draw and add color with whatever materials you have at home. So let's get started with our Kusama pumpkin. start my pumpkin drawing in pencil with my paper horizontal and I'm going to start with the stem here. So all pumpkins are different, all stems are different, some pumpkins don't even have stems so don't worry if your stem looks different from mine. Okay, I know I want the stem to be around the middle of the paper and then I can choose maybe which way it curves. So I'm going to do kind of a a curve line here for one side of my stem like that and then I want it to be maybe a little bit wider at the base so it matches that nice soft curve okay then at the top of the stem you want to put a little oval or a circle just like that and that makes it look kind of 3d the bottom of the stem, you could just close it off like this, or you could do an even larger oval that goes around the stem, just like that. It almost looks like a witch's hat. <laughs> okay, now for the vertical lines that create the shapes of the pumpkin bumps. Now, we talked about pumpkins not being perfectly, you know, geometric. They're organic shapes. So when I come down here, I want to kind of make sort of a wobbly shape. Let's see, I think I'm going to have it be a little larger at the top, almost like the curve of a bowling pin, and then maybe it gets even larger at the bottom. So it's a little bit of a wonky shape, sort of. Looks like a baby bottle <laughs> or a, um, the letter, the number eight kind of. I'm just going over this to make it dark so you can see it. Now you're going to continue mirroring those lines on the sides and this will make it have a real 3D effect. Doesn't matter which side you start with. So I'm going to mirror that curve at the top and in and then out. So that's going to go on the left, and then I'm going to do it again on the right. Whoa. Did you hear that airplane? Weird. Cool sound effects. Earlier today, I had the hiccups for about an hour, so I couldn't film with the hiccups. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna keep going around your edges here and you're gonna start a little bit higher this time, but again, you're gonna mirror that shape. Okay, it's getting pretty fat. Sorry, no offense, pumpkin. Hmm. I think I want to do one more row here and then I'll start going back into the distance. So here I'm going to go one more time out and then in. I don't see a whole lot of that side since it's starting to curve around. All right, then you're going to just do a few little marks going back into space. Now you don't see the back of that, but you just see the little top. So here I'm going to go boop and then end it here. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to start at the base of the stem 
and just curve it over. So the eye realizes that really does go behind, you just don't see it. Okay, then I'm gonna do another one here. Curve it up and over, like the top of a hill. And then do one here, up and over. And then I think you might still see one back there, too. Oh wow, yeah, that gives it a real 3D effect with the drawing. I'm gonna do a second pumpkin that's a little bit more traditional in shape, but I'd like to start it in a similar way at the top. My last stem curved that way. I think I'm gonna curve this way this time. Again, doing those two lines, closed off at the top, and I'm gonna give it a round base here. I might also add a couple lines just for details. Now, the last one had this sort of figure eight shape. I'm gonna do this one a little bit more traditional and just draw an oval here. So then I'm gonna continue with these curved lines on both sides, going around and around. And you can choose how fat your pumpkin gets. Might as well go big, right? I've got the space for it. So this is a similar pumpkin as the last one, but not exactly the same. That just goes to show that you can do art in lots of different ways. I still wanna try this 3D effect going back here for the back. Just a nice little touch. Very cool. Okay, those are two different ways of drawing pumpkins that are both cool. And you're cool, just the way you are. Next, I'm going to outline my pumpkin in Sharpie. I love Sharpie. Now that I'm done outlining in Sharpie, it's time for Kusama's signature polka dot. to create a 3D effect, you want to use different size dots. Let's start with the dots down the middle. These are going to be larger dots. So instead of just banging the marker, no, that'll kill the tip of your marker. It won't be sharp anymore. So you want to do a touch and wiggle. And these are going to be the largest ones that go all the way down the center, just like that. Next, let's do a little bit smaller dots. And then you want to get even smaller. These are going to be. Next, we're gonna work on the two sides, and I want you to make your largest dots right on the edge, and these are actually just gonna be half dots going along the two sides here. And do the same thing on the other side. Um, just like before, you're going to get a little smaller as you go towards the sides. So I'm going to do my medium dots here next. And 
and then my teeny tiny dots. It's already kind of having this 3D effect. So I'm gonna continue doing the same pattern where I start right on the edge with my larger dots and then I get smaller within each section. pumpkin just in black sharpie I thought it might be fun to try colored dots on this one so just a reminder you can make all these choices get creative get inspired by Kusama finished polka dotting both of these pumpkins. What do you think? Do you like one more than the other? Do you like them for different reasons? I think that's how I feel. Although I do admit I love the bright colors of this one. So now it's time for the background. And I'm gonna do something different for each of these. What do you wanna do for your background? Kusama is famous for her patterns. So I'm gonna put patterns in both of these backgrounds, but I'm gonna do them in different ways. So for this pumpkin, I'm gonna cut it out and glue it onto a different colored paper. But for this pumpkin, I'm gonna actually use the white paper that's there for my background.
Ta-da! I'm finished with my Kusama inspired pumpkins. What do you think? Lots of dots. Do you have a favorite? I like them for different reasons. Um, you may notice that the backgrounds are similar. I chose to make straight lines in both backgrounds to contrast with the circular dots just so that it would stand out and be different. And um, I feel like it worked pretty well with this one to kind of unify the whole piece. Of course, I couldn't just stop at one pumpkin. Once I put it on the big piece of paper, I knew I needed more pumpkins. So I like the way that this one works spatially, having the largest pumpkin here in the foreground and then going back in the distance to the teeny tiny pumpkin in the back. So I think that's probably my favorite thing about this one. And then with this one, I feel like it worked really well to leave the white background of the pumpkin with the oversaturated colors here. It makes the pumpkin really stand out. It's kind of hard to put pattern on pattern, but Kusama was a master. I learned that it's not as easy as it looks, but it was a lot of fun making all those polka dots. It kind of get in the rhythm. And thank you to our pumpkin inspiration shout out to these winter squash. I hope you had fun learning, learning facts about pumpkins and our Japanese artist, Yayoi Kusama. She's still alive today making polka dots. Happy Halloween, everyone. Enjoy this beautiful fall weather.